So I got this question a lot in my last video when I was talking about triple hundred set armor for the Solstice event. And that question was, what do you recommend for your staff focusing on each character? So I thought I'd make a video covering all of that just to get out of the way and in case people are still curious. So I'm going to get into each character and we're going to start on Hunter. So Hunters are probably the best class to benefit from this system change because Hunters notoriously have been very hard to get the right stats that they want, at least for this current meta, whether it's PvE or PvP, due to the system always giving you one stat in the top three, one stat in the bottom three, when you would want two stats in the top three. So, with this system, that goes away with the Solstice Armor, and now you can farm two stats in the same column that you want, whether it's two stats in top three or bottom three. In case you don't know what I mean by top and bottom, I mean top row being mobility, resilience, and recovery, bottom row being discipline, intellect, and strength. That's how the game breaks it down, so you would always get one top stat and one bottom stat as your quote-unquote juicer stats, or you would get, uh, let's say, like, you know, recub, discipline, resilience, uh, intellect, mobility, strength. They would always be broken up normally. But with Solstice, that goes away. It kind of breaks that rule. So you can get any combination that you want now. With that being said, my recommendations, starting with Hunter, would be the following. If you're doing PvE, which I do PvE, so this is my build that I would use for that. I would use Mobility, Resilience, and Discipline. I already have triple hunter stats on there from uh, farming Master Duality, which is another good source, by the way. Artifice Armor, extra mods, good stuff. So, what you want to do for this build is use your Ghost and your Sparks on your armor the following way. If you want Mobility and Resilience, you go Resilience, slot, doesn't matter here. And then your armor over here would be your Ember Sparks. Let me see if I have a extra armor piece to show you guys. Wouldn't you know it, in classic Bungie fashion, apparently Bonfire Bash is bugged out now and only gives you one Silver Ash in a completion. Sick. So I, I literally cannot show you guys an example on screen because I, I, I'm not doing 300 bashes just to get one armor piece up. So insert fix the game, Tyler one here. So I'm just going to be talking about it. Sorry that I can't show you on screen. I, the, the activity is borked. I quite literally can't do anything about it. So anyway, so your ideal situation for building, whether it's PvE or PvP characters, in PvE, I would go with the highest stat mod in my armor slot, and then the ghost would have the lesser of the two. For example, if you're building an intellect um, character for PvE stuff, and you're going to do int and resilience, I would put a spark of intelligence here, just pretend it's here because you can't show it, uh, spark of in intellect here, and then in my ghost mod, I would put a mod for resilience, right? So there it would roll a resilience and a intellect stat roll for my chest piece. And then it would distribute the rest of the points as normal, RNG, blah, 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 all that normal stuff. So then what this does is that it gives you your plus 20 on intellect and saves you the time and the cost and the effort of putting in an intellect mod in your first slot on your armor normally here because that would take five and that would just ruin everything else. For example, like you want to run uh, two of armor of the dying star, right? But then you also want to run something in your last slot, you know, taking charge, high energy fire, whatever it may be. If you five for intellect, it's going to screw you over. You literally will not have enough points to do all that. So that's how you avoid that mistake of just using intellect in this slot. Avoid it at all costs. If you're going to do an int build, put it in your armor and then your lesser stat, which is Resilience, which is only 3, would go in your Ghost mod here. Because if you get Resilience low, or too low, to the point where you want to keep building higher, you can then put in a Resilience mod on your armor, which only costs 3, and then you have 7 other points to play with. Much more space and room than a measly 5 for 3 slots. Now, if you're going to be doing a different build for PvE, you're going to want to go Mobility Resilience, which is good now with Solar 3.0 and abusing stuff like uh, Assassin's Cow builds, which will be on the channel later on. So you're going to want to do Resil and Mobility. Well, the good thing is Mobile and Resil uh, is three each, right? So Mobile right there, three, and Resilience is three. So you can do it, we, we, like either which way. You could put Resilience on the armor and Mobility on the Ghost, or swap the other two back and forth. 
And then if you want to do a Recov Resilience build, you can do Recov on your Armor of Spark because kind of a similar thing to Intellect. It's four for recovery to get a plus 10, and then your Resilience would be three. So you'd want to put Spark of Recovery on your Armor and then Resilience on your Ghost. And then if you're trying to squeeze in Discipline into the build, just do it that way and then hope RNG blesses your uh, Discipline drop as normal and there you have a Brazil Rico discipline roll or mobility resilience uh, discipline roll so like for example my helmet as you see right here mobility resilience and discipline this is perfect for me this is exactly the kind of build that I would want so that's what I went with and you know depending on what you want that that'd be your preference if you're going for a PvP build for hunters right you're gonna want mobility and recovery instead of resilience so you're gonna put recovery on your armor and then mobility on your ghost and you're going to ignore Resilience because Resilience in PvP is, uh, I'm not going to say useless, but clearly not anywhere near as powerful as it is for PvE content, right? And that's how I would build uh, my Hunter re revolving around the Stasis, or not Stasis, the Solstice armor, at least. And then you could try to splash in Keitel armor in there if you already have good Artifice armor and stuff like that. But other than that, that's the general idea, so let's just move on to the other two characters. Okay, so for Titans, straight up. The build for PvE is basically Bonk Hammer. You just Bonk Hammer everything. Uh, you could run like Thunder Crash and stuff and maybe a bubble here and there. But honestly, the, this Bonk Hammer thing is really stupid. And probably won't get nerfed until at the very least when Arc 3.0 launches. Whenever they, uh, you know, reveal all that stuff for uh, Season 18 on the 23rd. But until then, um, yeah, Bonk is key, Resilience is key. And that's basically all you need to build your Titans around. The three stats I would focus on would be Resil. Recov and Discipline. You could put Intellect instead of Discipline. That's kind of a toss-up between you, whether you want to use more grenade builds or you want to get your super faster. Me, personally, all I really care about is just revolving around Resilience for survivability, Recov for, well, recovering, and then just getting your melee back to continue abusing your Bonk plus Tractor Cannon for maximum damage. If you don't know what I'm talking about with Bonk, uh, just look up my Unkillable Titan build on the channel and you see exactly how stupid it is. So, kind of the same thing as Hunter. I'm going to try to build revolving around Resilience and Recov as my main two stats, and then hope I get into Discipline with RNG on the distribution. So, I would put my armor stats with Recov being the spark that I would use, and then for the other stat, Resilience, I would put it into my Ghost, like you see right there on screen, and that's how I would do armor for Titans. PvP, I, I don't think anything changes really for Titans. You, you know, you still want 100 Resilience because it revolves around your Barricade, and Recov is king in PvP for recovering as quickly as possible so you don't get, you know, die. And then, obviously, Intellect as well because you want to get your super faster if you're playing super sweaty Lord of Wolf Omni games in Trials and you try to cap the flag or something with your bubble. So, in the, in the event that you might want, like, let's say, Recov Intellect and you want less resilience for some reason, you know, hey, uh, what, whatever, player preference, um, then you would obviously put Intellect into your armor because it's a 5 stat. And reco recover is four, so it's less. So you put um, five for intellect, spark, and then you would go to your ghost, and you would put recover here instead of resilience. So you get intellect, recover rolls, and then hope for the rest with normal RNG stuff. And that's how you would build a titan, at least in my opinion. Okay, so finally we got warlock. Warlock, I'm gonna just flat out say best build is definitely revolving around resil, recover, and discipline, regardless of what class you use. All of them have good nades, all of them have good supers, but you don't really need to rely on them too much with Solar 3.0 being out. And all of them want to abuse Recov and Resilience. So as you can see on screen, I have a triple hundred build already good to go with my Starfire build. That's what I focused on. Basically, Starfire nades are nuts. Obviously, I want my nades as fast as possible. I want to Recov as fast as possible, and I want to be as tanky as much as humanly possible. So on my Ghost Rolling, I would go down the route of Rezil um, Discipline and then hope for as much recovery as possible. Luckily, I don't have to worry about that. I had your RNG already. So because I'm going Resilience and Discipline as my main two stats, I don't need to worry about which one goes into where because they're both three when it comes to this main slot. So I could put Spark of Rezil or Spark of uh, Discipline into this slot. It doesn't matter which one. And then you put the other one into um, your Ghost Mod. And it's not going to matter because they're both 3-3. If you're trying to do a combination that involves Recov, then again, 
you're going to put a spark of recov into your gloves and then you're going to put whatever your other stat is going to be into your ghost shell basically always prioritize the higher cost mod going into your uh spark slot so whatever it may be if it's intellect you prioritize that if it's recov you prioritize that and if it's not any of those two then it doesn't matter because the next highest cost is three and all of them are three at that point so that's how i would build uh all my characters warlock just ignore mobile ignore uh strength and intellect is just like eh, maybe i want some maybe i don't and that's it at least for this season for solar 3.0 maybe for arc they change stuff up maybe they nerf resilience back down because it's too powerful who knows but that's how i'd build my characters revolving the uh the whole solstice armor rule game break thing and hopefully that helps clear things up sorry i couldn't actually you know show you on screen with the ashes and stuff i legitimately did want to uh, actually show it on screen but damn dude like the game literally broke at the worst possible time when i'm trying to record this uh, and unfortunately uh can't do anything about it but hopefully i explained that enough without uh jumbling everything around and uh not being coherent that's it i'm gonna stop rambling stream daily on twitch links of all that stuff in the description as usual and i'll catch you guys in the next video uh goodbye notification bell